Life's facilities, God, it's going to be a long story this is because it all starts way back in sort of early 90s. They decided to purchase a land and build the premises that we're in now and obviously a lot of the team back then were involved in the design because we had one opportunity of creating a building that we could all work in, store the vehicles in, have our own dyno, have our own machine shop, offices, canteen, engine building room and so on and so on. So you know the championships that we've won through here through World Superbike titles, World Superbike races, World Supersport races, British Superbike, British Supersport, British Superstar, Isle of Man TT, Northwest, the list goes on and on and you can see you know we're surrounded with memorabilia and trophies from races in years gone by. The last Superbike Championship was actually in 2013 with Alex Lowe's and all of the, the previous success that we've had from 2004 onwards really have all come from that model. Previous models have always been a road bike that we have then had to convert to a racetrack and that's always been the ethos behind it. Now obviously over the years the rules and regulations have changed massively and I think it's that time where Honda now have primarily a track based machine. The philosophy has changed massively, you know, the 2020 machine is a totally different motorcycle altogether. Yeah, so obviously we've got the bike, the bike quite, um, the bike, the bike <sighs> quite late or early. <laughs> <laughs> Depends which way you look at it. Right. Well, what, what am I trying to say? Um, Where did you get the bike from? <laughs> we got the bike late December. 30th of December 2019 and we've just taken delivery of our new CBR 1000R RSP. We'd always want it earlier, for sure, but listen, you know, to, to get the bikes now in 2019 is uh, definitely a big step forward for us to start some development with the exhaust and the bodywork. As a standard bike, it's obviously a, a phenomenal bit of kit. Andrew and Glenn rode it in a test at Andalusia in the middle of January. Completely standard. Both of them loved it, so it was kind of evident then that it was, um, it was a, a bit of kit and, you know, it's, it's perfect for the track. See like the turn of it, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It really, really yeah. like surprised me. It turns. It, the bike really turns. Yeah. Yeah. Normally you don't feel the speed yeah. when you start riding again because your brain's used to it. But the first time you're in, you're like, it's, uh, yeah. it's really, really fast. From that test, we kind of got a few seating position things that we need to sort out, like you know, footrest height and handlebar position, which was good. So we've taken the data from that and started to produce some handlebars and footrests for us to use in racing. Andrew and Glenn are both fairly tall lads, and that was one of the areas where, especially Glenn commented on, that he felt his handlebar position for him was too close and he needed more room between the arms and the elbows and the knees and everything else to get tucked in. Day one was good, you know, like we've both spoke about, there's not too many of these bikes about at the minute and not too many people get their items, so we're certainly not going over, over the limit, but it's very impressive. Luckily we've been working with Evotech this year and they've been scanning some of the parts for us, which has helped us massively in getting bits designed and made without actually having the part to hand. The 3D system that we actually use uses a dot system to pinpoint the location of the actual part. So it uses the dot so that it recognises where it is. Once those dots have been scanned and in place, the actual lasers scan the part based on the dots as a reference, which means that you can stop and start the scan at any point and it knows exactly where it is. The accuracy that we would expect to get down to would be probably around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a millimetre. It can be better, but the tighter you make the resolution, the more data you gather in hence the slower the process actually is. So there's a balance to be had between speed and uh, accuracy. Also the fuel tank is a big part and it's the thing that we need to do a race of the BSB and to do TT. But to design it from scratch without the tank manufacturers ever seeing the tank, either they could scan the frame and scan the standard tank 
the subframe, the shock and the swing arm and from all those scans made a model of the bike so the designers then managed to get the tank in to fit those parts and put the extra leakages in knowing where it will go without interfering with the swing arm or any other part of the bike without seeing it or actually touching it he's done it all from CAD. It allows you to be almost production ready with your prototypes. You're virtually cutting out all of the development time that would have been an old phrase to use would be knife and fork in it, to sort of do a little bit, try it on, do another bit, try it on. Well this allows you to go straight to what would probably be a 3D print, which in most instances will be bang on straight away. As soon as you take away the, the road plastics and everything like that, that opens up a lot of space there, so it's, it's relatively easy to, to gain capacity under the seat area. With a lot of our superbike work uh, through BSB and through World Superbike, often top level riders are looking for a couple of hundred RPM in, in a corner, so there's been times over, over the last few years where we've then fine tuned ratios to that extent where they're carrying say two or three hundred RPM more or less to suit the throttle and the, the torque and the how the bike feels through the corner at that point. 